Right, so the last one of these got loads of views, hardly any dislikes, and it's dead easy to make. So, uh, well, just think of a clickbait title and I guess we're back again. What's up guys and welcome to another video and another reaction video to a Grand Prix. Today we are going to be looking at some of the most questionable tweets and Facebook comments of the Malaysian Grand Prix weekend. And uh, of course, seeing as Vettel had issues and Ferrari had issues, that just meant Facebook went into meltdown, especially the Ferrari fans and the uh, the conspiracy theorists amongst the uh, the Facebook community were absolutely loving it this weekend. But before we get into it, you can probably tell I've got some new surroundings, uh, my new uni house. So I've got a little picture frame up there and I've actually got no pictures in it at the moment. So uh, yeah, just, just try and gloss over that. And I know the wardrobe is slightly open, it's slightly broken. So we're a work in progress at the moment. But uh, yeah, before we get into the video, do let me know down in the comments. Obviously, as I talked about the conspiracies, who do you think actually had the quickest car this weekend? Do you think it was Ferrari, Red Bull? Do you think Mercedes were actually quick and the drivers just weren't? Love to hear your guys' thoughts, as always, down below. And let the battle commence. <laughs> so, starting off then, obviously, it was a great start to the weekend for Lewis Hamilton, putting it on pole position. And, of course, his main title rival, and pretty much only title rival now, where uh, Sebastian Vettel didn't have the greatest of qualifiers, didn't even get to set a time. And uh, that meant that he started from the back of the grid. And Charlie Hare put it... Uh, brilliantly so basically on the f1 page uh, they uh, they put the pole lap up from lewis hamilton you just put brace yourselves the angry faces are coming and literally every single time hamilton gets pole on the facebook page it's just a load of angry faces angry uh, yeah basically sour ferrari fans am i gonna get slaughtered in the comments for that whatever it gets views so uh, yeah we'll go with that so yeah that pretty much summarizes what facebook was all about after qualifying and then i believe after qualifying they actually put on the um, the f1 facebook page the um like the driver's briefing they did it for the monaco grand prix i think and uh, now this is the first time since then that they've actually put the driver's briefing up really really good thing absolutely love having that on the facebook page and um Pranav here puts it really, really well. He says it looks like a high school classroom, especially when Perez goes up to Charlie after the class ends. So yeah, basically in the driver's briefing, they're all just like sat there listening to Charlie White and Charlie White just looks like the teacher. And then after it's finished, uh, like during the discussion, they were talking about Perez and Bottas at turn one uh, in Singapore. Basically Perez like cut the first corner and ended up ahead of Bottas. So yeah, it was like after it ended, Perez like went up to uh, Charlie White in like he was just like his teacher or something. It was so funny and uh, yeah. If you haven't checked that out, do go and do so. I would highly recommend it. Then, of course, before the race had even started, Kimi Raikkonen was, was out of the race. It was his first DNS since um, Indianapolis 2005. And Michael here, yeah, he's got the conspiracy glasses on. He said, uh, they swapped cars. The FIA looked the other way. I mean, if a Ferrari gets away with a 10-second penalty for deliberately crashing in his car into Ham in Baku, this would be an easy one. I mean, come on, mate. Come on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. You go with that. You go with that. Stoffel van Dorm was actually one of the stars of the weekend. He finished in seventh place, so a joint career best uh, finish. And Fernando Alonso, I don't really know what happened to him, but he finished in about 11th or 12th place. I think he was out of the points. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, we've got... Uh, Ma Mahmoud, Mahmoud, I'm gonna go Mahmoud. He says, where are the people who feel for, feel sorry for Alonso, the best driver on the grid? I mean, if it isn't rustling Ferrari fans, if you want another way to trigger any F1 fan, or it seems, on Facebook, just tell them that Alonso is just an awful driver. You can see the angry faces there, I see you, I see you. But of course, it was all about Red Bull this weekend. They scored the most points of any team. I believe they took 40 points home. Uh, a win for Verstappen and a podium for Ricardo. And then in Ricardo's post-match, uh, post-match, I'm, I'm talking football, post-race interview, um, he said it was a very, very positive weekend, which it was. You know, the Red Bull was a quick car. But uh, Ryan here says, uh, getting hammered by your teammate is positive. Max had been quicker all year. Now he's finally getting some reliability in the results. And the true gap to Ricardo on track is showing. So uh, I guess I could sort of agree with that. I mean, a lot of times this season... Um, you know, Verstappen has been quicker. Uh, it's just his car has just blown up. So uh, I don't think Ryan really gets the point of him, you know, Ricardo saying that it was a positive weekend for the team um, and for him as well. But uh, Neil here just shows no mercy. He goes, STFU moron, lol, one F can end race. Max finally does better. And all of a sudden, he's smashing him. Brilliant grammar there. Really loving that, Neil. Thanks for that. And now we've got Steven once again. If you watched the last video, you'll know all about this lad. Uh, he made it on twice. 
And uh, yeah, he was just talking about Verstappen. He says, it was an example of the best car on the day getting a thorough workout by a phenomenal driver. Five championships in that lad, at least. The Dutch are very excited. They should be. And there we go. The Verstappen hype train is back. It's just like being on Twitter all over again. Uh, a lot of people get really, really triggered at people saying how good Verstappen is. I mean, I'm a Verstappen fan, so I'm probably a little bit biased. But he's such a good driver. Come on, just... Just go a little bit easy on the lad, please. <laughs> also, I do think five championships is a little bit generous, but uh, yeah, I give him a good car and he's definitely going to be a championship winner one day. Um, I, I, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, another war to go on in the comments. It just means I get more comments. I'm, I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Next up, we have Chamira. Chamira? I'm going to go Chamira. Um, there's a lot of complicated names that I've picked. I really haven't done a good job of my research. But anyway, he says, let's, let's say Max wins or come second or third in the USA. Is he able to celebrate it with champagne? According to the US law, no one under 21 cannot drink. So this is a very interesting one, and I don't actually know what the uh, the rules are on this. So I actually looked it up, and apparently, um, if you're under, obviously if you're under 21 in America, you can't drink unless you have adult supervision or from like a guardian. So how funny would it be if Jos Verstappen just has to go up on the podium with Max and just, like has to you know hold his hand and stand by his side and just go, oh, there you are, Max. There's your champagne. I'm just be incredible. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that, I, that'd be great. But uh, apparently I actually read somewhere that the drinking age in Malaysia is 21 uh, as well. And obviously he was on the podium there. So, yeah, we could have a little bit of an anticlimax, but uh, still, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> and then after the race, we had possibly the most bizarre incident of the season. Uh, you know, the, the, camera is, uh, the cameras are on Verstappen, you know, celebrating. And then we just get a panning shot to Sebastian Vettel in the middle of the track with three wheels on his wagon. And then we see the replay of, uh, you know, Stroll and him colliding. It was deemed to be a racing incident. I think Stroll sort of got away with one there. But uh, then obviously Vettel jumps onto the side of Verline's car, which is pretty good to see. But uh, Jono here was, was not a big fan. He says, Vettel thinks he's Senna sitting on the side pod of Mansell. But Senna ran out, ran out of fuel, unlike Vettel. Who crashes into people and there we can see the angry faces are back at it again. You do not insult Ferrari on, on Facebook. That is rule number one of being on F1 Facebook. I think we've learned already. And then on the driver of the day post on F1, obviously it got given to Sebastian Vettel. Uh, so Martin commented, car of the day, Lance Strolls Williams. That thing is built like a tank. No damage after it completely dismantled the Ferrari. And I have to agree with that. You know... He, he just literally, he absolutely destroyed the suspension and possibly even the gearbox of Vettel's car. And uh, you know, Stroll just drives away. Absolutely no damage whatsoever. And, you know, whatever Williams are making that car out of, I think, yeah, I think they should probably come out of F1. You know, the results haven't been great this year. And, you know, just go into, like, the, the tank championship or whatever, you know, they do. That sort of thing. Don't know whether it's a thing, but they can make it. They can make it. So, yeah, not as many questionable comments on Facebook. But we've got one honorary mention, and that is on uh, on Twitter. So, obviously, the conspiracy theories are coming through, and we've just got one last one. All I'm going to say is Lance Stroll drove a Mercedes-powered car. You know, just think about that. Championship, Vettel, colliding into him. Do, do people seriously believe that? I mean, come on. Come on. So, yeah, that just about caps off all the reactions uh, as I said, not as many as uh, Singapore, but unfortunately, we can't have three cars wiping each other out at Turn 1 every week. If you did enjoy this, do leave a like. If you do want me to do it after the Japanese Grand Prix at the weekend, then do let me know. It's an early one, so I might try and do it straight after the race or something while I'm on my sort of come down from lack of sleep. But uh, yeah, like I say, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But until next time, guys, do take care. Bye-bye.